around the 37. 87 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. And to give this time to the tailback. They got two of the three they needed there. Leaves them with third and just a yard. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. How about that run? Picks up a first down. Note the enthusiasm in my boys' member. Last week, AFC Offensive Player of the Week. I think he's trying to get another one in fold. And you talked watching film a lot about his form and just hitting the hole, running north and south, as we like to say. And I, I think he's been doing that a lot recently. Squaring those shoulders and getting downhill. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and 10. Out of the gun, they give to Freeman. And some nice running going to get him down close to a first down at the Rams 27. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? And inside the 20 before he's brought down. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. zone now. They'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Hodges. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Two yards left on second down from the nine. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. A great effort there. With touchdown number 27, that ties Priest Holmes for the third most in a single year. And the Jets have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, 
three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> that he would have it on the ground. <laughs> And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Yeah, yeah, we dominate today. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. On first and ten, it's Wilson. Completes it to Hardman. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. The Jets on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and five. On the draw, this will be Freeman. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now they try the right side here. And some nice running going to get him down close to a first down at the Rams' 15-yard line. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. 169 yards rushing for him in this one as he starts to draw nearer to a 1,500-yard campaign. Well, sometimes, Brandon, it's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there a big third-down conversion. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. 
That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. On second down, Freeman. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A great play there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Jets add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. But that makes this a two-score ball game. And, you know, the way this thing has been going, Charles, two scores kind of feels like three or four scores. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. We are in the fourth and final quarter as the offense will have the football starting this drive first and ten. Hands it off out of the gun. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. Here's Wilson. And this pass broken up. But the contact well timed there and now fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. They're going on fourth down. It's Wilson. And he's got his big tight end over the middle, complete. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Oh, he fakes the spike. Oh, no, he lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage. But I think the good news outweighs it, able to retain possession. That was big for them. Good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. Oh, he didn't spike it. He faked it. He sets to fire deep. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Throwing now is Wilson. He's going to go up top again. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. The Jets. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for the Jets, the train just keeps rolling 9-0 and now to start this campaign. And they'll return home next week to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Meanwhile, for L.A., their season is on life support somewhat now at 3-6. and six. And they'll be on the road next week as they get a date with the Seahawks in Seattle. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.